Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe for more than one friend. Maybe. Today we're building the greatest detective in literary history, Sherlock Holmes. With deductive reasoning, keen observation skills, and a killer hat, there's no question why he's been reimagined as Cumberbatch, RDJ, and Will Ferrell. It's because he's public domain and getting character rights can be tricky. Just ask Spider-Man. Knowledge. I'm out knowledge. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need knowledge. Everything and anything we can study needs to be in our mind palace. Speaking of, we'll make sure our memory is photographic, with every bit of information we find sticking with us. Finally, we'll make sure that we observe everything in a room the second we step inside it. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, I'd just make sure that your dexterity and wisdom are good to go. Intelligence is actually going to be our top stat here. If you want to impress Watson, you need to be brilliant. Wisdom next, this is what determines how good we are at seeing, hearing, and determining if someone is lying. Dexterity after that, despite being kind of a nerd, Sherlock has remarkable reflexes. Constitution will follow, Sherlock's body is generally coursing with an amount of chemicals that would knock out lesser men. Strength is a bit low, but you're in decent shape, so we'll dump charisma. Watson isn't your doctor, he's your translator, making sure that everything you say doesn't piss off Scotland Yard as much as it would. Sherlock is a human with the mind of a flayer, so we'll give him a little variation with a keen mind feat. This gives you plus one intelligence, you know where north is, you know what time it is, but most importantly, you can accurately remember anything you've seen or heard in the last month. So keep in mind, this gets a slight buff in January and a slight nerf in February. Bump your intelligence again and your wisdom with your two free points, take nature for your skill of choice, and the cloistered scholar background for history and arcana proficiency. It's the perfect background for a kid who didn't have a lot of friends. Kick things off as a rogue. First level rogues get four skills from the rogue list. Go for investigation, perception, insight, and performance to play the violin. I'd prefer religion, but that's not an option from the rogue list. You can grab expertise and two skills of your choice, investigation and insight, will help you find clues and break liars. Finally, you get sneak attack, letting you deal an extra 1d6 damage to creatures you have advantage on an attack roll against, or if Watson is within 5 feet of them. You have to use a ranged or finesse weapon for this, and unfortunately there isn't a bludgeoning weapon to beat people with a cane, but work with your DM. If they're cool with reflavoring a dagger to be a cane, great. If not, just be a stabby Sherlock. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. You're not a bruiser, you're a tactician. Figure out if it's a fight you can win, and bail if you can't. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype. The Inquisitive from Xanathar's Guide to Everything is pretty much Sherlock in a subclass. You have an ear for deceit, meaning the lowest you can roll on an inside check when you're determining lies is an 8. And then it specifies that this is the roll of the dice, so you can still add your modifier for a minimum of 14. You also have an eye for detail, letting you look for clues with a perception check or investigation check as a bonus action, though I wouldn't recommend doing this in a fight. Wrap things up, then look for clues. To wrap things up more quickly, use insightful fighting. This lets you make an insight check against an enemy's deception check. If they fail, you get to add your sneak attack damage to them, as long as you don't have disadvantage for up to a minute. Keep in mind, this does use your bonus action, so no cunning actions in the same round. Your sneak attack also increases to 2d6. Fourth level rogues can grab a feat. The observant feat gives you plus one intelligence or wisdom. We're using wisdom a bit more at this point, so I'd go for that. With this, you can read lips and and you get an extra plus five to your passive perception and passive investigation. So even when you're not actively looking, you'll be spotting things left and right with an 18 passive perception. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce damage from an attack you can see by half. Obviously you saw that hit coming, but knew that if you took the hit on the lower left side of your stomach, it would leave the thug open to a counter blow in the ear, disrupting his natural center of balance and allowing you to topple him and emerge victorious or you got lucky. But with 3d6 sneak attack damage, I'm calling it raw talent. Sixth level rogues get expertise and two more skills, grab perception and a knowledge skill of your choice. I'd go for history so you have more to chat about with Mycroft. Not that you want to chat with Mycroft. Just a very quick multi-class here into Monk for Unarmored Defense, making your AC 10 plus your Dexterity and your Wisdom modifier while you're not wearing armor. This is a godsend for this build, as you're a rogue investing more in your soft stats than you are in your Dexterity, making you pretty easy to hit. You also get Martial Arts. You can get your Buritsu going with an Unarmed Attack, dealing 1d4 plus your Dexterity modifier that you can use as a bonus action after you've taken the regular attack action. So you can cane and punch in the same round, as long as you already have Insightful Fighting Up and don't need to use one of those cunning actions. Back over to 
rogue, 7th level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage on a failed deck save and no damage on a successful ones. You've basically got eyes in the back of your head, so an explosion is probably something you'd be able to see coming. Sneak attack also increases to 46. 8th level rogues can grab another feat. The skilled feat lets you grab 3 more skills, go for a religion, survival, and medicine. Sure, Watson's whole thing is being a doctor, but you're actually better at it than him. Just try not to make him feel bad. Ninth level inquisitive rogues get steady eye, giving you advantage on perception and investigation checks if you only use half your movement. If you're not in combat, that basically means free advantage on two skills you have expertise in, which is insane. Sneak attack also increases to 5d6 if you like fighting things. Tenth level rogues get an ability score improvement, and we need one. Round up your decks and intelligence for more accurate attacks and better detective skills. Eleventh level rogues get reliable talent, meaning the lowest you can roll with a skill with which you have proficiency is a 10. Now, you have 10 skill proficiencies here, but the thing I want to point out here is that that means that you're actually pretty good at the violin now, so Mrs. Hudson will be happy. Sneak Attack is also 66 if you're into that sort of thing. 12th level rogues get another ability score improvement. Bump the wisdom to keep your amazing observation skill on par with your amazing knowledge skills. 13th level inquisitive rogues get unerring eye, letting you use an action to detect illusions, shape changers, and other sensory interruptions within 30 feet of you if you're not blinded or deafened. Now, you only know that you're being tricked, you don't necessarily know what hides behind the illusion. You can use this an amount of times equal to your wisdom modifier per long rest, good thing that's high. Your sneak attack also increases to 7d6. 14th level rogues get blind sense, making you aware of any invisible creature within 10 feet of you as long as you can hear. Between this and your 19 passive perception, nobody is going to get the drop on you. 15th level rogues get slippery mind, but that's slippery to your enemies, not yourself. Gives you proficiency with wisdom saving throws, making your wisdom save plus 9. Hold person and charm person aren't big concerns, but Irene can still charm and hold you if you want her to. Also, 8d6 sneak attack. That sounds fun. I think it does. 16th level rogues get another ability score improvement. I'd say camp wisdom. It buffs your AC, helps your insightful fighting, passive perception, and active perception. All very Sherlock things. 17th level inquisitive rogues get an eye for weakness, increasing your sneak attack by 3d6 when you have your insightful fighting active on a creature. You also get the standard sneak attack buff that you get with every odd numbered rogue level, so you've got 12d6 sneak attack at this point. 18th level rogues are elusive, meaning that as long as you're not incapacitated, no attack has advantage to hit you. You've already seen the whole fight play out before it started in your head. How could someone surprise you? Capstone is the 19th level of rogue for an ability score improvement. Cap your intelligence for a plus 17 modifier to investigation checks. Nothing can hide from you, at least not for long. Your sneak attack damage also increases to 10d6 or 13d6 with insightful fighting. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you're the greatest detective nobody else even comes close. With capped intelligence and wisdom, nine proficiencies between the two, and guaranteed decent rolls on everything you're proficient with, you'll get every bit of information possible for a puzzle. Your insightful fighting also has a plus 17 modifier to activate, pretty much guaranteeing 13 d6 sneak attack damage when you hit a target, which is fantastic damage. Finally, your passive perception is 20, and nobody gets to attack you with advantage, so sneak attacks are not really possible against you. For weaknesses, if you want to sneak attack, you have to land the attack first. Your modifier is plus 8 to hit, which would be great at a low or mid level, but at level 20, the enemies you'll be fighting will have you missing that regularly. Those enemies might also ignore your damage, as you have no methods of dealing non-physical damage, and late game, pretty much everything can just shrug that off. Finally, your charisma is really bad, so you might solve the mystery, then fail to convince anyone you're correct if some smarmy bard comes in who provides a different solution. Basically, you need Watson. He's more of a bruiser, and he's not terrible at making friends. Figure out who done it, then turn it over to Scotland Yard. Just remember to keep your friends close, and that's it. No follow-up. You don't make friends well. Be nice to John. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. Sherlock is a brainy boy, but where's the bulk? Vote in the poll for some of Arnold Schwarzenegger's best roles, The Terminator, Conan the Barbarian, or Mr. Freeze, and come back Thursday for some laughs.